Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, BTC Software, an integrated solution. My name is Tim Pierce, and I work within the sales team here at BTC Software. Um, the webinar itself um, should last no longer than around about 45 minutes. There will be a question-answer session at the end of the demonstration. Um, I'll run through an agenda in, um, in due course. Um, just to let you know that I'm accompanied here by my colleague, Daniel Keane. Um, Daniel will be showing some of the key functionality associated with our solution. Um, so around about 15, 20 minutes into the demo, I'll pass you over to Dan. And Dan will, as I mentioned, show some of the key functionality in association with our accounts production and tax filing elements of the software. Okay, um, let's look at the initial agenda. So the idea is to provide um, an overview. Um, that's an overview in terms of the product, but also in terms of who BTC Software are. Um, okay, so the agenda is as follows. Um, as mentioned, a quick look at who are BTC Software. So who are we? Um, what we provide. In addition to what we provide, what we actually offer. Um, so what we offer alongside um, the product in terms of services. Um, we're then going to look at the core product. So we'll um, look at the software. Now, the software is split into three key areas, and those key areas are as follows, practice management, year-end accounts, and tax filing. So I'm going to cover a little bit on practice management, and then I'm going to pass over to, uh, to Dan, as mentioned earlier, and Dan will complete the showing of the product. Um, and then finally, we're going to open up the... Um, the floor to a question and answer session. So we're going to endeavour to get through the agenda within around about 45 minutes or so, all being well, um, and then there will be a question and answer session at the end. So in an ideal world, it should take no longer than sort of 50, 55 minutes, depending on questions. Okay, so who are BT Software? Well, before I actually go on to that, and it is actually kind of, or does form... Um, the basis of who we are. Um, as you know, I hope you know that we provide tax software and we were acknowledged um, in terms of the, um, the software suite as a whole um, by being the winners of the Accounting Web Software Excellence Awards, which took place last month in three separate categories. So we're moving forward because the year before, we won Best Tax Software, but this year we're happy to announce that we won uh, Best Practice Management and CRM Software of the Year, Practice Suite of the Year, and Professional Tax Software of the Year. So we're obviously quite proud of that fact, so forgive the, uh, the self-congratulations there, but it was and is fresh in our minds because we won that last month. And for those of you who are listening on this as a recording, um, that was in September of 2018. Okay, so again, a quick overview. I'm not going to spend too long on this because I appreciate as well as um, trialists and, and those who are new to the BTC proposition, we have a number of our clients on this particular webinar, so I'll be very brief in, on that basis um, and try and deliver this on a, on a higher level. Um, but it's obviously important, I think, for those um, who don't know BTC software to give you an understanding of our ethos um, and how we came to be. So, um, who are BTC software? So we were founded in 1999 um, through the union of an accountant in practice who up until very recently was still an accountant in practice and a successful software developer who had spent the majority of his time in the uh, medical markets producing software within that particular industry. Um, we started off in 1999 by releasing a corporation tax module. So that's the genesis of the whole suite as we see it now. Obviously at that stage it wasn't an integrated solution, it was a module. Um, we launched our self-assessment and practice management products in 2009, so that's a, a key date for us there. Um, in addition to that, we launched the accounts production module back in 2014. So it doesn't feel that long ago, but we're pushing now sort of five years since we've had the accounts production. So the accounts production really for us was the final piece of the jigsaw or the key piece of the jigsaw in terms of the, the trinity of solution that we offer. Um, we haven't stopped with 
accounts production. The latest release included our new program, which we'll look at kind of very briefly within the confines of the demo, and that relates to company secretarial. So company secretarial was added relatively recently um, and is integrated within the suite. Um, we are and pride ourselves on being fiercely independent, so we're not bound by any um, private equity board. Um, we consider ourselves, and this is subjective, and you need to determine whether that's the case, as the provider of choice for SME practitioners. Now that's borne out a bit in terms of our user numbers. So we have in the region of 1,500 practices who are reliant on our software. And in addition to that, circa another 500 accountants in industry. Um, now that's a combined total of users within the region of 10,000 users. Uh, not all of those users will be using our software on a daily basis, um, but the vast majority will be. Um, we, in addition, um, are based in Adelstone in Surrey, and uh, that contributes to the sometimes lengthy trip in via the M25 for the majority of our staff here. Okay, so that's kind of a, a snapshot as to who we are. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you is our mission statement. So our mission is to develop feature-rich, affordable software that simplifies accounting professionals' lives and makes their practice more productive and profitable. Okay, so that's a mission statement, but how do we actually live up to our mission or how do we believe we do that? Um, well, that's borne out in what we offer accountants in addition to the offering, what we provide alongside that. So to sort of start off with what we offer, and I've kind of um, run past a few of these factors already, but we offer tax submission software, um, year-end accounts production, company's house filing, so not just submissions to HMRC, but also to company's house. Um, we offer practice management, which wraps around the compliance. As referred to earlier, we now have a company secretarial module found within the database. Um, we offer a cloud solution, and we're actually going to be viewing the software via um, cloud access today. So just to let you know, the cloud product is as per um, the desktop version. It's just all around accessibility. Um, we offer GDPR compliance within the database. And as many of you will know, as I sit here in October 2018, the key topic for many people is around Entity Vivat. And we have a cloud version, so pure cloud version of an MTD for VAT hub. Now that's going to form the basis of our cloud offering over time. So we're starting off with Entity for VAT, um, shortly followed by MTD for business. Okay, so that's what we offer, but what do we provide alongside the offering? Okay, well, there's lots of um, things that we can implement to make transitional um, from periods from one software provider to another, from existing incumbent software to our software um, doable and make that transition as easy as possible. So what do we provide alongside the product? Well, we offer installation guidance from the get-go through our dedicated support team. Again, our support team as per sales development administration are based within the building here within Surrey in Adelstone. Um, so we offer installation guidance. We also offer data migration. So that's a very key point. We can take data from other software and import that data into our database. Um, we offer continual telephone product support. Again, that's based within the confines of our setup in Adelstone. And product training, that, that's an important point because product training is often considered a revenue stream for um, other software providers within this industry. Um, but we include product training as part of a subscription. Um, we will assign you a designated account manager um, throughout your journey with BTC Software. So designated account management is, is a key part of that process. Um, you'll have a dedicated person managing your accounts. Um, and what else do we offer? In a very kind of changing corporate world, 
Within tax software, we offer still very flexible renewal terms. So we're not suggesting that you don't have freedom of movement um, upon your request. So we'd never look to tie you into protracted terms and conditions as some of our competitors like to do. Okay, so I think it's about time that we look at the software. So I'm just going to open up the software now. and take you um, via what we call the splash screen into the main database. Okay, so the splash screen here is a guide really. It's, as you can see, um, providing some collateral around different elements that make up the solution suite. So the full solution suite is the product which is designed for, in most cases, multiple users, and affords all that integration between the three key elements. That's practice management, year-end accounts, and tax filing. So now we're gonna move from the splash screen into the actual database itself. And before I pass over to Dan, I'm just going to highlight some of the entry-level practice management functionality found within the database. Um, I think the best starting point really is to mention that within the database there are two views of what afforded to you um, as a practitioner so obviously this will differ if you're purchasing software or using software as an accountant industry the whole practice management element um, in some cases can be fast forwarded um, although it still will provide you with key dates and deadlines for your own business or businesses so if I look at the client option at the top of the screen on the menu, which I have uh, selected, um, we'll see here that we have two views within the database. So the initial view is that of individuals. So on the right-hand side here on this grid system, you can see that I have a number of individuals within the database. Um, the individual view is comprised of the following, and that will be individuals who are associated with your organizations um, or sole traders, individual tax return clients and often a combination of all three elements. So that's the individual view. So the individuals will show in some cases individuals for whom you're not um, preparing their individual tax return for um, but it is an individual of an organization. So you can acknowledge that within the database by selecting um, a status assigned for that particular individual. Okay, so we move away from the individual view and open up the organizational view. Now this will be um, an option to open up our demo client with whom Dan is going to uh, highlight lots of the functionality within accounts production and because it's a limited company, the corporation tax filing. I'm going to select, I'm going to be my demo client here who Dan will be working with, and that's Smith Software. So I referenced the fact earlier um, within the introduction that we can move in data found within other incumbent software and move that data into our database. So in, in actuality, the type of information we can move in is as follows. So reference details within the details page, you'll see there's a number of tabs across the top of the screen here that we're gonna move through. Um, in order, um, but we can move in reference details, organization names, client types, client statuses, um, trading as details, nature of trade, registration numbers, tax districts, etc. So the kind of the, the information which can be arduous to um, move into a database, we can shortcut that process and we can take the information found within your existing software, um, perform a replication of said data and move that replication into our database so that when you're using our software from the get-go, it's fully loaded with all of your client details. Um, in terms of the types of clients with whom you can work within the organizational view, so I've obviously referenced the fact that you can work with individuals, um, sole traders within the individual view, so they won't be apparent from within this particular drop-down with the client type, but you can see here that we have the ability or provide the ability to work with the following. So charities, both incorporated and unincorporated, clubs or associations, companies limited by guarantee, 
limited companies, limited liability partnerships, partnerships, PLCs, private unlimited companies, and trusts. So what happens here is you select the client, the client with whom you're looking to work with, and then we afford you all the templates within the database to enable you to work with a given client within that particular remit. So if we're referring to, say, um, a limited company, we would have all the relevant FRS templates within our urine accounts and all the filing options afforded in terms of the corporation tax return. Okay, so just to confirm, there are two views. There's an individual view and a view of organizations. I'm going to click back onto the organizational view. And before I hand over to Dan, um, I'm just going to explain a couple of the options on the top of the screen here because I started off by referencing company secretary as our new module within the database. So if I select open company secretarial solution, that will open up the product within the database. There we go. So there's our company secretarial module. Um, and outside of a, a direct company secretary module, we also offer a company house search check. So the company house search check will enable me to pick up information available around a company found on the company house website. So that's a nice shortcut. So if you're not moving your data over, um, you can utilize the company house search check and it will pick up information such as, um, where in most cases it's going to be areas such as um, registered addresses, incorporation dates, etc. Okay, so without further ado, I'm now going to pass you over to Dan. Dan's going to provide an overview of the remaining elements, key elements found within practice management, and he's going to look at how you can work and build up the year and accounts for a given period, the links between various accounting products, bookkeeping solutions, and our year and accounts, and then he's going to perform some filing options as well. So filing to Cumbies House and filing to HMRC. Over to you, Dan. Good morning, everyone, and thank you there, Tim, uh, for the introduction. Now, Tim's kindly mentioned the first tab that we have here in our organizational view. And throughout the demo, I'm going to explain each of the rest of the tabs that we've got up at the top here, and then we'll finish on this one here, the Tasks, Tax, and AP Returns tab, as this is going to be our main tab in terms of getting to the compliance. So to get to the tax returns, the year-end accounts, the VAT returns, that's all done through this tab here. Now, it's important to mention whichever view that you're in, whether you're in the individual view or the organizational view, you have these same set of tabs that run along the top here. And when you select your client from the right-hand side, all the information that falls under these tabs that we can see here are going to be pertaining to the client selected. So you can see we're looking at Smith Software, so all the information that falls under these tabs now are going to be pertaining to Smith Software. So Tim's briefly gone over the details page there and mentioned that we can bring in all of your standing client data from existing uh, third-party software. And he's also mentioned that we've got a link to the company's house search and then the COSEC solution there as well. Now, if we move on to the next tab, we've got your Know Your Client tab, which is essentially further information on our client, so we can introduce risk level, risk notes, and further notes at the top and the bottom here. In addition to that, we can use this tab for validation checks, so we can either scan in documents if you've got a paper document, such as a driving license or a passport, or if you've got the document saved onto your desktop, we can simply move in the desktop and browse for that file. And if I hover over the categories here, you can see the different sort of documents that we're working with. Now, if we move on to the key dates tab, which is going to be our next tab here. Now, as you can see here, the key dates are key dates pertaining to this particular client. And it's important to mention that these dates are updated by the software and automatically populated. So not only are they populated via the information that you enter into the details page, they're automatically populated. So they won't lie dormant within the software. So we get a really nice view here for this client and we can see exactly where the key dates are in relation to different areas such as PAYE, VAT, corporation tax, and company's house. Now, the contact details tab is going to be your addresses. So again, this is something that we can bring across from your existing third-party provider or is something that's included in that company's house search that we saw earlier. 
Now, if you wanted to add an additional address, you just go to the Add option, and it's nice and simple. You can enter your address into the contact details page. Now, if we move on to our next tab, which is going to be the Associated Individuals tab. Now, we're selecting limited companies. So you can see with my limited company, I've got a director associated with that limited company. Now, the way that we can associate an individual with our limited company or our partnership or our trust is we can choose the Add option. We first select the role of the individual. And then the second drop down here is going to give us a list of that individual view or a list of our individuals that are found within the individual view. Now, associated organizations, is, in this case, is going to be if your limited company is part of any groups or if you're in that individual view that we saw earlier, you can see which organizations that that individual is associated with. Now, if we move on to the Appointments tab. Now, the Appointments tab is going to bring me nicely into showing you some of the practice management features. As kind of a, a summary, the best way to describe our practice management is by what we call the 3R principle. And that the software reports, reminds, and creates recurrences. So what we mean by that is we can report on system-defined events, which are going to be your corporation tax returns, your year-end accounts, your engagement letters. And we can also report on customized events. So that could be anything from a, a payroll reminder, um, a reminder for anti-money laundering, or even a birthday. Following that, we can set up reminders within the software to remind us of those events. And then we can also set up recurrences. So we would only have to set up the event once, and we can have it recur however many times, whether it be a daily event, uh, weekly, quarterly, or annually. Now, the appointments tab that we're viewing here is specific to appointments. You can see I've got a couple of examples there and I've got uh, external meeting. You may add a board meeting in here, maybe an appointment with your client. And we have two types of tasks. So we have an appointment and a task. Now, appointment, as I said, is specific to appointments. But a task, however, which we'll see in a second, does allow you to track them through the different reports and include statuses. And that's going to lead me nicely on to showing you some of the reports that we have within the software now. So if I move up into the Reports tab in my main menu, now we have our statutory single reports. So we have our tax return status reports. So if I hover over that, you can see we've got each of our tax returns there and an SA payment schedule report, a year end accounts and a company's house submission status report, our VAT return status report, an individual tax return calculation, and then in line with MTD, we've also got a digital tax return report, which is gonna show you which of your clients qualify for making tax digital. Now, if we take a quick example, or take a quick look at an example of one of these reports. So if I go to my tax return status report, and we look at the individual tax return report, as January is coming up very soon. Now, you can see for the 2018 tax year, we have a list of my individuals. Now, even with some of these individuals, you can see that I haven't actually created an individual tax return for some of these individuals. However, it's still being logged into this report. And each of these reports that we see are only going to show us our outstanding events until we tick the show completed item, and then that will show us our completed item or items. Now, with the system defined events, which are going to be your tax returns, your year end accounts, they're automatically tracked for you by the use of these statuses. So if we go to an earlier year for the individual tax returns, if we take a look at 2015, for example, or 2014, what we'll see is we'll see that we have different statuses, which will have for our individual tax returns. And we may even, if I tick the show completed option, have the completed one there as well. As an example, if you create an individual tax return, it will be in progress. And when you submit it, it will automatically mark as complete, such as the one that we've got here. So there are statutory reports. Now we do have the pending events report at the bottom here, which is gonna give us a holistic view of all our current outstanding events. So this is across system defined events and your customized events. And there's many, many ways that we can filter this report down. So we can filter it down by the user, the tax year, 
and then we have our search filters here. So at the moment I'm searching via the event. So if I go to my search box over here and I wanted to bring up all my current outstanding corporation tax returns, I simply search for corporation tax. I can search for individual tax returns, an engagement letter, anything I want. Now I also have search filters here in that I can search for the client reference number or even the client name. We're looking at Smith Software. So if I type in Smith Software, you can see the events pertaining to Smith Software. Now what we can do now is we can take a look at how we can bring a customized event into here. And when we move into the year and accounts a bit later on, I will show you a live example of how system defined event is automatically tracked in this pending events report. So for now, if we look at a customized event, so if I come out of my pending events report now and I move into my tasks, tax and accounts production terms tab and I choose the add option. Now, whenever we see a dark blue box, such as the one that we're looking at here, this means that this particular field is customizable. So you can see in this case, we can introduce our own event types into here so that we can track them through different reports that we've just seen there. Now, if I use the drop down for my event type, you can see these ones in bold up at the top here. Now, these are our system defined events. So you can see we're selecting a limited company. So we've got a corporation tax return task. If we were selecting an individual, we'd have an individual tax return, a partnership, a partnership, so on. Now, we've also got our VAT return tasks and our year and accounts task. But for now, I'm going to take a look at a customized event which you can see these ones outside of bold. These are all events that I've introduced into the system myself. So if we take a look at one of these customized events now, so if we choose as an example, request for payroll info, I can choose a description of the event. I can choose a location. I can assign this event to another user within the software. I can choose a start date a due date and a reminder date and time. So if we set up a reminder now for two minutes time, and I can put some example of notes in my notes tab. So as you can see, we've set up our event there. We've chosen our description. We've included a start date, a due date, and then also a reminder. And we can also choose our recurrence as well. So you can see here with my drop down, I've got the recurrence interval. So I can decide whether this is going to be a daily, a weekly, a monthly or a yearly recurrence. And if I choose monthly and every three months, we've got ourselves a quarterly event. And as you can see at the bottom, we've got a range of recurrence there as well. So we can decide whether this event is going to recur indefinitely or we can end it after however many occurrences we like. So once we've completed that, we can save and close our customized event. And you can see it drops down under our tasks, tax and AP returns tab. And if I go into my reports now and go into my pending events report, we can now search for that request for payroll event. So I can search for the event. I can search for request for payroll and you can see straight away it pops up with our description, our notes, and then our start date and due date. Now what we can also do is we can actually filter this report down using these start date and due dates. So we can choose the start date or the due date filter. And if we choose the due date, we can see exactly what's due in the next four weeks or what's due this month or what's even due from a specific date if you decide to enter that in. Now, if we move into the reports and letters tab, now the reports and letters are split into two categories. So if I go to my administration window up at the top and I go to my report and template design, you can see the two categories and that we've got our tax return covering letters and then also our client letters. So if we start off by taking a look at our tax return covering letter, now you can see here what we're looking at is a template for an individual tax return covering letter. And you can see on the right hand side, I've got a view of my template and it's being saved as a global template. So it's one template per remit. So once you edit this template and you're happy with it, every time you produce an individual tax return, it's going to come up with all of that information. It's going to save you so much time rather than editing everything in Word and Publisher and changing things. You can use what's called 
database tags, which we can see here, to bring in the relevant information that you want to in your template. So you can see we've got general database tags, which feature names and dates. But with our individual tax return covering letter, we can also introduce tax return information. So we can introduce the total tax due, we can introduce the tax year, or even if I wanted to introduce the IR mark into my template, I would just click on the database tag and you can see it just drops directly into my template there. Now the report template editor is a popular um, feature in that we do provide training of the software. At the moment we don't charge for training and this is a popular area of training that we do provide on both the reports of the templates, editings, and then also the client letters, which we'll come to see. And you can also see I've got my other templates as there. So I've got my each of my tax returns and then my year end accounts as well. So now if we go to the report and template design and we look at my client letters, you can see we've got templates already for you in that we've got the tax questionnaires, the payment reminder letters, an engagement letter. And if I select my engagement letter to look at as an example, and I edit my report template, you can see this time we're introducing the database tags in that we've got the agent company, so your company and address, the date, and then the client's details there as well. Same way I did with my covering letter, I can edit the template introduce database tags at the top, and if I insert an image from file, this is where you can enter your letterhead and if you want to, company signature there as well. Now if we move on to our documents and folders tab, so this is our document management facility in that we can introduce documents into the documents tab. Now we can either scan these documents in, moving towards that paperless office, or we can simply move them in from the desktop. So documents are for your single documents, and then folders are going to be for your whole folders. So you can see I've included some invoices here that under the different years. And if I click on any of these documents, I can view and edit the documents, I can email the documents, or I can also link them with my DocSafe, which is our GDPR functionality, in order to send documents through secure portals and to request for an electronic signature. Now, files are going to relate to any physical files, so if you have any files stored outside of the office or in another location, you can keep a track of those. And then we've got the notes tab, which is going to be your free form notes section. So you can see as an example here, I've got um, some telephone calls that I've had with my client, and if I choose the add option, you can add any sort of note that you want to within the notes tab. Again, moving towards that paperless office. Okay, now if we start by, we saw earlier with our customized task through the tasks, tax and AP returns tab. Now this time we're going to look at a system defined event and we're going to look at the year end accounts now. So if I go to my add task and I go to my event type and I choose the year end accounts. Now you'll notice there as I've selected the year end accounts, it's automatically picked up my accounting period and that's because it's rolling it forward from a prior year that we have here. Now, if it's your first year of trading or if you want to change that, it's nice and simple. You choose the drop down and then you can change the date using the calendar option there. Now, in addition to that, again, we can sign it to another user. We can choose a start date, a due date, and a reminder date and time. However, we saw that with our customized event. So for now, I'm just gonna open my summary by viewing and editing the year end accounts. So I'm going to select that now and it's going to open up a summary window. So it's going to bring through all of the relevant information from our details page. And from here, it will actually allow us to choose the correct accounts production template. So you can see it's automatically selected the right one for my particular client here, which is the company small FRS section 1A. And you can see we've got the different templates there as well for your limited companies. In addition to that, if you've got audited or abridged accounts, you can tick the two tick boxes there, and we've got the accountant's report there as well. For now, I'm just going to open up my year in accounts, and that's going to transition us now straight into our year in accounts module.
Now the first message that I'm going to be greeted with is do we want to roll forward from the previous year? To which we're going to say yes. And then following that, I should receive a warning message. And that will be a really good chance to explain that we have both warning and error messages within the software, which act as safety net features, not allowing you to step a foot wrong within the software. So I'm going to roll forward my trial balance from the prior year. And you can see I've got a, a warning message there. Now the warnings in this case is something that I can override. So a warning isn't something that's going to affect the year in accounts when I send them to company's house. However, an error message will. And an error message we'll see a little bit later on when we go into the corporation tax module. But for now, for the sake of the webinar this morning, I'm going to override this warning. And you can see we're presented with the cover page here. Yeah. Now, if I move over to the table of contents on my left-hand side, you can see we've got the different pages of the report. And if I scroll down to my extended trial balance, and I'm going to move my editing tool over to the right-hand side, you can see where we've rolled forward from our prior year, our comparatives have now entered into column J for us. And it's now up for us to get our comparatives of, of, to get our figures into column C here, into my original trial balance column into the current year. Now there's many different ways that we can get our figures directly into column C here. If I start with the first way, which is where we see dark gray boxes, this acts as a running theme throughout the software, it means that we can manually key figures directly into those. So the gray boxes are the ones that we can manually key our figures into. And then you can see these ones to the right, these ones in white, these are our calculations. So that's the first way. We can manually key figures directly into the extended trial balance. We can also enter journals, which I'll come back to. We've got an incomplete records functionality, which acts as a, a mini bookkeeping package, and that we can add a bank account. We can introduce some opening balances up at the top here. And then if you've got a, a client who maybe comes in with a shoebox of receipts, you can log those payments and receipts directly into the incomplete records functionality and export that into our extended trial balance. And then finally, we've got our trial balance import. Now, if you work with a bookkeeping package, if I choose the drop down here, I'm sure you'll see your bookkeeping package on there. And if you don't work with a bookkeeping package that is on there, or if there's, um, if you've got a trial balance within Excel, you can actually choose the custom option and you can even import a trial balance from Excel. Now there are four online bookkeeping packages that we work with specifically and that we have two way integration with. Those are Xero, QuickBooks Online, Free Agent, and Reckon One. Now I'm gonna use Xero as an example. And you can see there with Xero, I've got the option to download. So if I choose the download option, you can see I can log into Xero from directly within our software. Now, if you're not using Xero, if you're using VT or if you're using Sage, you would be using a, a CSV file and you'd be browsing for a CSV file. So I'm gonna log in using my Xero email and password, and I can allow access for 30 minutes. And I'm gonna choose yes to import when it gives me the notification. There we go. And you can see we get to our mapping screen. So whichever bookkeeping package, or if you're importing from Excel, wherever you're importing from, you'll get to this exact same mapping screen here. And in this case, because I've imported from zero, I've got the zero codes on the left-hand side and the descriptions. And what we're seeing here is the software's mapping Zero's codes and descriptions to our ledgers and accounts. Now it works in like a traffic light system would and it's mapped these ones in green successfully. If the software was to guess a ledger and account, it would mark it in yellow and it would ask you to complete that off. And there may be an occasion where you have to manually assign your ledgers and accounts as I'm gonna do for these four examples now. Now where I'm mapping these ledgers and accounts against the zero IDs and descriptions, when I roll forward into the, the following year, we'll actually see that it will remember the mapping that I've done here. 
So should I not change or should I not introduce any more different IDs or descriptions, we'll actually get a complete mapping screen like the one that we'll see now. So I'm going to map this final one here and you can see we've got a complete mapping screen. So as I said, if you don't introduce any new IDs or descriptions into the following year, you'll essentially see a complete mapping screen like this and all you would have to do is choose the import option. So if we choose the import option now, we get a nice notification there saying, are we sure we want to import the data? To which we'll say yes. And that's going to go directly into our extended draw balance, as we can see there. Now, I did mention journals earlier. So if I go into my journals tab and I view and edit my journals, I can add a journal adjustment. So if we call the description journal adjustment and we do turnover versus cost of sales so you can see where we've imported from zero it's actually picked up the zero codes for our, our sales there and if we take a hundred out of sales and put it into our opening stock and save and close that you can see we get a description of our journal so we can add an additional journal we can view, view and amend this one or we can delete it and if I choose the OK, it will go directly into column D there. Now we saw with the online bookkeeping packages that we can log directly into the bookkeeping package from within BCC software. In addition to that, it is a two-way integration because we can post our journals and our adjustments back out into the bookkeeping package, again, directly from within BTC software. So the way we do that is if we go to the print option and we go to our journal export, And I choose my export option. Now it will automatically remember and pick up the fact that I've imported from zero. If I choose the drop down, you can see the other options there as well. And if I choose the upload option and choose update, you can see we get a nice message to say that journals have been successfully uploaded. And do we wish to view the journals in zero? And if I select yes, that's now going to open up a browser where I can log in to my Xero account and we'll see that journal now within Xero. There we go. So if I go back to BTC software, now at the moment we're looking at a lot of boxes here with no numerical value and we do have a tool to combat that. If I move my cursor up here into the collapse empty data tool, that's just going to give us a much nicer view of our extended trial balance, as you can see there, and get rid of you, get rid of those unused cells. Now, where I mentioned earlier about our associated individual, we had a director for this limited company. So if I move over to the report signature information, you can see my director has been automatically assigned there through the officer signing reports and balance sheets. And it's chosen the date signed there as well. Now, finally, the last thing to do is we can check our accounts and generate the all-important iXPRL file using the button up at the top here. And I may receive a warning, as you can see there. I've left this warning up deliberately, as this is a good example of a warning. As you can see there, it's, my warning is check the page numbering for the year-end accounts. Now, when you send your year-end accounts to company's house, they're not worried about the page numbering on your report. That's why it's a good example of a warning. However, it will affect the aesthetics of your report when you send it to your client. So as I said earlier, and as I'm going to do now, I'm going to override the warnings for the sake of the webinar. And we'll be presented with a nice message to say that our year and accounts were checked and that iXPRL file generated successfully. There we go. Now, if I come out of the year in accounts now and move into the corporation tax module, if I choose the small X up at the top here and I go back into the year in accounts summary that we were in earlier, from here we can open up our CT return, which will open up a similar summary to the one that we're looking at here, but specifically for our corporation tax return. 
There we go. And from here, I can open up my CT Comp and CT600. Now we have two-way integration between the accounts and the tax. So you can see all the figures that I've entered into the extended trial balance now will be brought through into our corporation tax computation. And you can see my figures here in the adjustment of profit. So this is where we can add and include our addbacks and deductions. And if I go into my table of contents on the left hand side and tick our corporation tax calculation, you can see it's already worked out our corporation tax chargeable figure. Now again, if I move into the table of contents, you can see we've got the different pages of the CT600. And if you work with any supplementary schedule, so any capital allowances, capital gains, R&D, we've got you covered at the bottom here in the supplementary schedules option, which includes a specialist CT600 forms there as well. Now, if we say this is a fairly simple corporation tax calculation, and we go ahead and check the return and generate the IXBRL file using the option up at the top there, we should see an example of an error message. So I'm going to do that now so we can see what an error message looks like. We saw a warning earlier. There we go. So we get a corporation tax return check failed. Again, this acts as a safety net feature of the software. And in this case, this would not be acceptable to send to HMRC, which is why we've got the error as opposed to a warning. And if I move my box into the middle here, you can see we've got the description of, er of the error and then also our box number as well. So it's saying that we're missing a declaration status in box 985. So if we go to our box 985 now, and we enter in the director as a status. Now we're only having to do this for the first year as this is a first year corporation tax return for this particular client. However, after the first year, it will remember the name and status and it will automatically roll that forward for us. So now that we've eliminated that error, if we check the return and generate the ISBRL file, we should receive our nice message to say that the, year and the corporation tax return was checked and that computation file generated successfully. And when we go back into our year and accounts now, within our extended trial balance, we'll see that corporation tax payable figure has automatically been posted into the column E, which is our corporation tax provision column. There we go. Now, if I go back into my year and accounts summary, and I open my year and accounts, And we're going to move into our extended trial balance. You can see there in column E, you've got your corporation tax chargeable figure. If I move into my journals, it's appeared as a journal there as well. So once we've made that change now, we can complete our set of year and accounts. So we can check and generate the IXPRL file a final time. We'll override the warnings for the sake of the webinar. And we'll see our nice message to say checked and generated successfully. So that's our year-end accounts finished. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to send a report to our client, a year-end accounts report. So we're going to use a small X to come out of the year-end accounts now. And we've got the option here to send to client for review. So if I click that option, It'll ask me, which of the different pages do I want to include on the report? As you can see there. And if I create my report, I'll have the different options. So I briefly mentioned my DocSafe earlier. My DocSafe is going to be our first option there. So if we wanted to send the document through a secure portal and request for an electronic signature in line with GDPR, we can use my DocSafe. You've got the email, save as PDF and print option. If I choose the preview option there, we can see exactly how our year and accounts report will look like. And if I zoom out slightly, you can see we've got the cover page here for the accounts. And then if I scroll down, you can see we've got the different pages of our report. So our company information, our director's report, our accountant's report, P&L, the balance sheet, I notes the accounts here. 
fixed assets, and then finally at the bottom, our detailed P&L. Now, if you can imagine we've sent that to the client for review, if we pull this down slightly, you can see our year and account status there has automatically just changed to with client for review. So that's where with our system defined events, by the use of those statuses, the software is automatically tracking the progress of each of those events. So if I go to my reports menu and go down to pending events, and we search now for our year-end accounts. You can see straight away the one that we've been working on because it's with client for review and it's shown us that we've spent 11 minutes within that module. So you can see the time recording there as well. And following that time recording, in addition to be able to pull reports on each of our different events, we've also got the timesheets and the activity, activity log time summaries is there, which we can drill down into different client times, event times, or user times. So once we sent that to the client and they've sent it back, they've signed it, they're happy with it, we can now submit the accounts to Companies House using the Submit Accounts option. First, what we have to do is we have to confirm we've got the authority to submit the accounts. So I'm going to do that by ticking the tick box at the bottom here and you can see we've got a filleted and full accounts option and if I submit my filleted accounts to Companies House that will go directly to Companies House. Now you can see I've got a submission failed there uh, as I'm on a test version of the product but hopefully you should have a nice message to say that your year and accounts were sent successfully. Now the final thing to do is if I move into my corporation tax return I open my CT return. And I'm going to open up my CT comp and CT 600. As I'm going to check and generate it at final time now, as we're attaching those IX Bureau set of accounts to the CT 600 so that we can submit it to HMRC in the mandatory format. So if I check the return and generate the IX Bureau file, final time we'll be able to submit the full thing to HMRC and it will generate those IX Burel files behind the background in the background for us so we're going to wait for that now to check and generate the computation file and then we'll be able to submit that directly to HMRC there we go so if I use a small X now to come out of the corporation tax module, I can submit to HMRC. Again, same as we did before, confirm we've got the authority from the client and choose the submit option there as well. Now, in addition to that, we can check the HMRC gateway status here. And we have a nice little shortcut if I choose the options menu to our agent filing credentials. So this is where we will enter in our agent details for HMRC and you've got your company's house details there as well. Okay, so I think that's going to draw a close uh, to this morning's demonstration. Uh, I'm going to pass you back to Tim now who's going to finish off with the rest of the presentation.